I can't believe I'm having to defend the boys. I can't. But if I gotta choose between the boys and journalists, I have to choose the lesser evil because the boys is fictional. But unfortunately, we do have to live with journalists. So uh, Forbes is claiming universally, right? Like this is objective fact. And if you disagree with this, you're a bad person that the boys has crossed the line. Now, you need to understand, okay? Art is subjective, but humor is objective and it decides by Forbes magazine. Like, Forbes magazine gets to say what is acceptable and what isn't because all of us together have elected these people in a position of power, right? Like, they are the doctors and engineers of society. So, like, society is spread in two places. People who agree with Forbes and people who disagree. And if you disagree... Uh, anything bad that happens to you is acceptable because you're not one of the decent folks. So, uh, this is a show which even Forbes admits is about being shocking and disgusting, right? So, like, if something is shocking and disgusting, if you can think of it, it's probably in the boys. And this is not as a surprise. It was established in season one. Um... But it's American entertainment, right? Like, this is what America is funded on right now. It's, it's, it's what the culture is and is decided by the people. Like, every single time someone decides to tune in and watch The Boys, they are creating this culture, right? Like, when someone talks about it, when someone tunes in. Um, and I gotta say, the reason The Boys is what it is is because there's nothing better, right? Like, if you want The Boys to not be popular create something better but unfortunately no one creates something better so you're going to have to uh, exist with the shocking humor now i got a point that this is not something new like i grew up with far worse shit you know i grew up with south park well like you got little kids that are being probed by aliens in the butthole like like that is south park all right uh you also had beavis and butthead uh you also had jackass like, like the idea that this is something new, that, that we all need to be outraged about this, is what pisses me off. Like, as if history just didn't exist. You know, like, as if nothing ever happened, and all of a sudden we need to pretend that we're moral people, and we're visiting Sunday church, and this just outrages us, right? For clicks on the internet. Because this is literally what it's all about. Like, it's so simple. It would be so simple for me to come in here and say, oh my goodness, the boys is so outrageous. Like, what they did is beyond the pale, you guys. Like, how, how can we allow it? How can we allow it? What type of person watches this? You know? And if I go like that, everyone's like, wow, V is such a decent person. Holy shit. Wow. Oh my God. I wish I was like V. And you get clicks on the internet. This is why they're doing it. In reality, no one gives a fuck. Because if they did, they would stop watching. Like, you would see the rating collapse due to this episode. And there are people that stop watching The Boys. But for other reasons, like this, just ain't it, Chief. Like, people are still buying The Boys. Uh, Game of Thrones. Okay, like, j just so you can understand. Game of Thrones, the book. Like, the actual book that's a commercial publication has a scene where an Arya Stark lookalike gets raped by Ramsay's dogs while Rick has to watch. Like, that is official commercial and people buy it. It, it's popular, right? So, in other words, people like shock in fantasy. Like, in fiction, if it's shocking, there is an audience that's literally just for that. Which is why Beavis and Bath and South Park and all the other things that I mentioned existed. But, but we gotta pretend that we don't know about these. They don't exist, right? Like, everything is pure and sacred and, and everything is nice. And we just get outraged in order to get our clicks. So, what are they possibly outraged about? Well... The Boys has always been a show to determine shock and disgust in its audience, so it's no wonder that it keeps pushing the proverbial envelope. I'm no prude, but... Okay, everything before the but is false. Every single time you see one of these sentences, I blah blah blah, but... Everything before the but, 100% false. All the time, every time, zero exception to this rule. So this person is a prude. I mean, they're a journalist, of course they are. They have to decide morality for people. Like, without the journalist, society would just lose its way. Uh, I'm often grossed out by this show. But like, why do you keep watching it? It wouldn't be popular. You would actually get your wish. You would actually get your wish if you and other people that are actually grossed out by it would stop watching it. But you can't help yourself, right? Like, you actually like it. And this is what happened with Game of Thrones. And by the way, I'm not such a huge fan of the boys anyway. But like, Game of Thrones had exactly the same shit happen. 
you had the first seasons, and then you had, like, the mortal busybodies come in, and it's like, oh, there's too many tits on the screen, oh, depictions of rape, oh, blah, 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 blah. And, and then we know what happened with the latest seasons, when the showrunners actually decided to listen to these moral busybodies. Like, they just destroy stuff. They don't understand why something exists. Yeah, like, shocking actually sells. Yes, no, like, if you have a, jo a joke or shock humor, it, it, society has shown throughout the decades, through the actions of people, not from what they say, but through the actions of people, they actually enjoy this type of content. The more shocking, the more they like it. You know, it, it, the fact that you have to come up and point this out is just bizarre, but anyway... So, uh, it's been funny for most part, uh, though early on in the series, Starlight is sexually assaulted by the superhero The Deep. That scene was deeply disturbing, and it was supposed to be. It was a tough scene, but it was there for a reason. Starlight got a glimpse at how vile the Seven truly were. I got, uh, something else from that scene? Like, Starlight could have just said no? Like, she was in a position to say no, but for some reason... She chose to be in the seven, despite knowing how the seven are. No, seriously, look, I, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I know this is controversial, but if I was to go uh, and join a, a prestigious company, and there's like five dudes over there, and they're like, yeah, uh, we're going to allow you to join, but you got to blow us. I would be like, no, I'm out. This is what, isn't this like what you would do? Isn't this like what normal people would do? Like, why, why would you choose... Whatever, you know, it's a show. I, I guess it's like a Rorschach test, right? Like, if I'm watching the show and I'm uh, getting the wrong conclusions about what I'm seeing, then I'm a bad person. But anyway, um, apparently in this week's episode of The Boys, however, things are taken too far and not in a good way. Okay, notice the objective speaking. Like, if this was the case, people would just stop watching it. Their shock value and then their shock value. What does this even mean? Like, what, what does it mean their shock value and then their shock value? You, you're watching a show that's just trying to do shock and gore humor. And, and also, I love the fact that gore just doesn't matter anymore, right? Like, I actually grew in a time when people were disgusted by gratuitous violence. Now, now like, when it comes to violent stuff, you can just go and do whatever. Like, whatever you want. Like, that's fine. But if it's anything to do with sexuality, that's where you get forced to write uh, stuff and, and people from Twitter freak out. I, I, I don't know why, like, why, why can't it be both or neither? Like, like why is it that, like, the worst type of girl? I gotta teach you, if you had a time machine and you took, like, The Boys or The Walking Dead or anything like that, 40 years in the past, people would be absolutely mortified. And not that the sexuality, mind you, they would be mortified at the violence. They would call it satanic. They would say that people who watch or make this are psychopaths. They don't think that the people who watch or make these shows are completely unhinged. But we don't believe that anymore. Like, when it comes to violence, no, it's, I mean, it's just fiction, right? It's just fiction when it comes to violence. But when it comes to having, apparently, a sex dungeon, oh, society is getting ruined. Uh, so, it's shocking for the lack of empathy for victims of sexual assault. I love how the journalist uses those victims... In order to stand on their back and go on their crusade. To, it's kind of fun to be John out of arc, right? I mean, all of a sudden, people admire you. People go like, oh, what a moral person you are. Oh, you're calling the stuff that... It, it's a mature TV show. It, it's for adults, right? Now, if you're going to say, well, you can't depict it in this way because it has no empathy towards victims. All right, fine. Uh, what empathy does the boys have for people that are disabled? Ah, okay, so we can't have those themes now, right? Uh, what empathy does it have for broken families, people who get divorced? What, what empathy does it have for people that grow up in a single parent household? What empathy does it have for people that are victims of crime, mugging, and other things? Also, so, like, what exactly can we represent on TV, then? You know, what, what, what uh, does it have uh, to say about uh, people who are veterans and have been fighting in wars? I mean, you know, if you're going to model fiction... And treat it as if it's real. And, and, and be like concerned because we can't depict something that offends someone. This is why America is having such shit entertainment right now. That a fucking shark at a baseball game is replacing what Disney was supposed to do. Like, like when I think of America I, I, at a baseball game, I would think like Looney Tunes should have been on that big screen. Not Gargura. But unfortunately, everything is so shit that... 
you you get like other people that make culture without the mortal busybodies uh doing something better and by the way i hated the sex dungeon i just want people to understand i hated it but at the same time just because i hated it doesn't mean that i i will get to tell the producers what they can and can't produce because like oh well this is too offensive you know, like, like, this is literally how they managed to destroy DC Comics. This is how they managed to destroy Western gaming. It, it's like, you have games that were very popular in the past. Uh, shocking games like Manhunt. They would never be able to be produced today. But even with Manhunt aside, when they are remaking GTA, when they are remaking an old game, they have to cut content from it constant. Constant. For the modern audience. And the same people that are justifying this are going Pikachu face when anime is becoming more popular and VTubers are taking over. And they just don't understand why. They just can't understand it. It's because you haven't convinced the rest of the people that you have a point. That's why. All you do is like you're a fringe minority group that just gets to speak on behalf of everyone else, assuming that everyone agrees with you. And when you start censoring shit, people just don't like it and they find different entertainment. So, uh, apparently, content warning. Oh, fuck off. Uh, my colleague, Paul Tassi, has already detailed why this seed is so messed up, so I'll direct you with the synopsis, as far as I could. Uh, the boys was playing Huey suffering for laughs. I was a bit mollified by his emotional breakdown. Well, maybe that's what the, uh, writers actually wanted you to experience. Right? Like... Maybe they want you to sympathize with the character, so they place the character in a very difficult and unimaginable situation so that you get to empathize with it a little bit more. It's the opposite way of how Star Wars is doing, where they're like, oh, this is Rey, you gotta like... No, like, it takes the character and it it puts them into some messed up, fucked up shit. That's why Huey is actually popular. In the first episode, and this is what attracted people to the show... In the first episode, he's in love with a woman, and one of the superheroes kill her. Right? Now, what does it say about, uh, about the empathy towards people who lose a loved one? It, 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 come on. So, uh, apparently, Tech Knight uh, is set up to be a freak, and blah, 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 bad cave, sex dungeon. I, I, I'm going to tell you something, alright? There's actually no Tech Knight. There's actually no cave. There's actually no Huey. Like, they do not exist. They only exist in your mind. And what you think about it is, is for your entertainment, but it also says a lot about you. So if you're watching this and you're shocked because, you know, like your brain is, is so powerful that it's creating this fiction to make you believe that it's real. And you're shocked by this, but you still keep watching the show. You, you choose to still tune in the next episode. That says more about you. Than someone who just doesn't get shocked. To me, it doesn't get shocked. Because, like, again, I, I grew up in South Park. I seem far worse. I mean, there's nothing in the boys that cannot do what South Park did. There's nothing in the boys that cannot do what uh, the video game Manhunt had in it. So, you know, it's, it's just like, meh. I'm completely desensitized to it. So, so when I see something so mundane, which, again, like, even compared to other episodes from the boys, isn't that over the top. I'm like, come on. You know, the only thing that bothers me in the boys is that they they are willing to show naked men and cocks and uh, men uh, going deep into other uh, people's assholes. Like, they're, they're fine with doing that. But when it comes to showing breasts, they don't. And this is a part of the campaign of demoralizing young men and making them think that, oh, if you're cisgender and straight and you identify with that, you're a problem, right? It's to gaslight them that they're outcasts of society simply because they, they like to see beautiful women. That is something that I do have a problem with because that is fucking insidious. That is also not what the writers would probably write. Like, I'm willing to bet if you take these writers and you send them in Poland and you make them do another film without any of the uh, looming diversity officers and all of the consultants and all that shit, you would probably see more Bumba on the screen. Just like you saw in Spartacus, just like we saw in Game of Thrones. like, Because that's what people want to see. Since ancient Greece, by the way, like this is not a new thing. People like to see violence and they like to see sexuality. Uh, but that is something that I have a problem with. Because like they, they are promoting anything that's with the cult of allies. Like That gets to be uplifted. 
and everything that's uh, heteronormative, including mild shit like baby it's cold outside, that gets to be heavily suppressed. So it is like a gaslight effort uh, in order to get people to believe that, that just normal vanilla stuff is not okay. Uh, and, and even the superheroes, right? Like, there's no superhero or character here that actually has a wholesome romance where, where there's, like, no strings attached. It's just, like, two people getting together with the purpose of making a family. They're not hooking up or anything. They're not just having casual sex. No, like, they legitimately just want to get married. They live happily ever after. You will not find that in any American entertainment. And, you know, the chances of that happening naturally and grassroots is incredibly low. Because if you read stories from before the year 2000, like, that was all the time, right? Like, you, you did have the concept of, like, yeah, like, these people are in love. You don't have that now. So, like, that would be accurate criticism that Forbes could put forward. But unfortunately, oh, well, I didn't like the sex dungeon. Oh, no, Dios mio. Yeah, okay. I mean, whatever. Um, they're the new church. You know, when I want to get morality, I go to the Catholic church. The last place that I want to go is Forbes. But this is what it represents. Like, people like Forbes are the new church, right? Like, they decide what you should and you shouldn't watch. Let me know what you guys think, though. And as usual, I was reading the comment section. Take care.